Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover equivalent fractions. Basically, equivalent fractions are fractions with different names, but they have the same exact value. We're going to take a look at how we find equivalent fractions using multiplication or division. So let's jump into number one, where we have probably the most common and well-known fraction, one half. We're going to find three equivalent fractions to one half. Now we cannot use division for one half because there is nothing we can divide one and two by, our numerator and denominator. The only common factor is one. So we're going to have to use multiplication. So let's multiply our numerator and denominator by two in order to get our first equivalent fraction. So multiply by two, multiply by two, and we get, well, one times two is two, and then two times two is four. Two fourths is equivalent to one half. Those fractions have different names. We say them differently, one half and two fourths, but they have the same exact value. Let's try another example here. Come to the right and let's multiply both our numerator and denominator by five. So we end up with, well, one times five is five, and then two times five is 10. Five tenths is equivalent to one half. Different names, same value. One more example, so we will come underneath here. One half, and let's multiply both our numerator and denominator by 100. So we end up with one times 100 is 100, and then two times 100 is 200. So 100 two hundredths is equivalent to one half. To be clear, we can only use multiplication or division when it comes to equivalent fractions. Addition or subtraction will not give us an equivalent fraction, so keep that in mind. And when it comes to equivalent fractions, we have an infinite amount of equivalent fractions for any given fraction. Because multiplication, well, we can multiply by anything. As long as we do it to both the numerator and denominator, we get an equivalent fraction. Now division is a little more limited. It depends on that first given fraction if we can use it. But again, that multiplication really opens up our possibilities and gives us an infinite amount of equivalent fractions. Let's move on to number two, where we have 5 fifteenths. Now for 5 fifteenths, we can use multiplication or division. We can use division for this one because we have something we can divide both 5 and 15 by. We can divide both of them by 5. So let's do that and see what equivalent fraction we get. So 5 divided by 5 and then 15 divided by 5. 5 divided by 5 gives us 1. And then 15 divided by 5 gives us 3. So 1 third is equivalent to 5 fifteenths. Let's use multiplication as well to find two more examples of equivalent fractions to 5 fifteenths. So I'll come to the right here, rewrite our original fraction, and let's multiply both by 3. So 5 times 3 gives us 15, and then 15 times 3 gives us 45. So 15 45ths is another example of an equivalent fraction to 5 15ths. And then lastly, let's multiply by 10. So times 10, times 10, and we get 5 times 10 is 50. And then 15 times 10 is 150. So 50 150ths another example of an equivalent fraction to 5 fifteenths. Let's move on to numbers three and four, where we have a given fraction and then part of an equivalent fraction. We need to find the missing part of those equivalent fractions. So for number three, we have three fourths equals how many sixteenths? So we need to look at what we're given. We're given both denominators. We have a four and a 16 we need to take a look at how do we get that four to equal 16? And then we need to do that same exact thing 
to the numerator in order to get an equivalent fraction. Well, we know that 4 times 4 equals 16. So let's do the same exact thing to the numerator. 3 times 4 gives us 12. So 12 is our missing number there. 12 sixteenths is equivalent to 3 fourths. And lastly, let's move on to number 4, where we have 18 21sts equals 6 and then a missing denominator. So we need to take a look at what we're given, and we're given the numerators. So we have an 18 and a 6. So let's think, how do we get 18 to equal 6? Well, 18 divided by 3 equals 6 divided by 3. So we need to do the same thing to the denominator in order to keep this equivalent. So we have 21 divided by 3, that equals 7. So 6 sevenths is equivalent to 18 21sts. So there you have it. There's how you use multiplication or division to get equivalent fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.